history of English language. If we want to know and want to learn the language, we must understand that what can be or what could be the history of language. So now if you want to learn, let's go back a little and let's go back to the age of stone, stone age, when the people were there and they had no idea even they were missing the idea of eating, that they didn't know, they didn't have any kind of culture or civilization. Slowly, slowly they developed their civilization. They had not found fire. They didn't know that we cook food. They didn't know that we need house, cloths, similarly language. So if these things were missing in their life, so it's very impossible to think that they would have language. So what they had that time, they had a kind of gestures, kind of indications, some sounds. They used to shout to convey their masses, to tell somebody that what he wants to say. But it was not for the longer time. It could not work because just showing some sounds, just giving some sounds, that cannot give the exact meaning of anything. So they started facing problems while they wanted to convey. For example, if their conveyor, he wants to convey his friend that there is a danger, lions are coming. So that was very hard for them to make him understand that lions are coming or the troop is there. So that can be dangerous or some good things are there. So there were lots of things and they were facing problems. Then some of them who were intelligent, they just started planning that what to do, how to manage this chaos. Then they started naming the things, places, people around them. For example, they must have named tree first time, tree, river, child, man, woman, male, female. So like this they started naming each and everything around them and they started learning it, showing images that these are the things. So it became a kind of coding. But the thing is that how we got these many languages because that time when the communities were being larger and larger, that time smaller communities got separated. Or suppose two of them or some of them, they fled away. So that time they developed their own community in some different area or the different part, living hundreds of years there. So their family, their generation got developed according to the atmospheric and geographical nature of the place and accordingly they got different inner organism. So that time also the earth has several communities because they got separated from one another but they didn't know it. So they, every community developed their own coding knowing that nobody else is there on earth except them because that was of their use. If you talk about Chinese, so they have different mouth organism that they cannot open their mouth freely. So they have different codings. If you talk about Arab countries, so they can open their mouth very comfortably. So like several parts of earth, they had communities, they developed their own coding. So what we are doing, we are learning these codings. If you talk about English language, we are learning a special coding. So that has to be remembered by us that what we are doing, we are learning coding. 
coding and that coding was developed by the ancestors by the people living in some a special area or the region now if you talk more that how we got the grammar so william bullocker in 16th century he developed grammar so that we can learn language in the easiest way because earlier it was taking lots of time it was consuming time because it was a part of behavior if they wanted to learn any language they had to live with that community and that was only the medium to learn a language and to practice it but later on people were there scholars were there they developed a kind of grammar they broke that particular language and separated in several parts so just like it the language which got developed and first it was used by Geoffrey Chaucer who was 1340 born AD Geoffrey Chaucer he wrote most of his popular English books in between 1374 to 1480 so that was the great work that's why he is known and called as father of English language and then William Bullocker in 16th century he developed grammar in grammar you can see that as soon as we start the former parts we have a noun noun is the first part of that grammar why so because that was the step when the language started, when the language originated. This is only the reason. Since naming system was the first step of making a language, that's why noun is the first chapter of parts of speech. So this way you can learn language by understanding that this is based on coding and certain structures that cannot be changed. For example, if I call it as a wall, then we cannot change the name of a wall because now it is fixed. It is a kind of coding. And as soon as you would speak wall, so the image of wall would come to others' mind. So that is the system of his speaking. And this way we have and we got an attachment with these words psychologically as well. If anybody will speak tears, tears, if anybody will speak sadness, so that type of thoughts and emotions would be generated. And if anybody will say happiness, cheerfulness, so that type of emotions would be generated in you. So it becomes very psychological. So learning a language can be very easy and interesting if we take it and we understand the development of it. In this book, you can find grammar in an interesting way, in a very sequence and psychological way so that you can learn it. So you are most welcome to this book and the content. I hope and believe that you would learn it. Thank you.